Welcome into the flagship presented by College Corner. No, I am not Stephen Godfrey. I'm Zach Barry, but that is Ben Garrett. The show has been resurrected. We are back, and we're here why. to talk. Tell them well, why. Explain. We are back because the Talk of Champions podcast network has expanded over the last couple of weeks. We have, I believe, now the number is up to seven shows for your listening and viewing pleasure. Um, it's uh, it's it's been a uh, whirlwind of a couple of weeks, but we are excited. Um, I don't know if I would say bigger and better, but definitely bigger. Uh, Ben's going to have some really cool stuff for you on the video component. I'm excited about it. I saw a little snippet don't of it earlier it. this week. Don't oversell it. <laughs> I, the, the man's talented. He knows what he's doing. But um, I'll tell you what I will oversell, and that is College Corner. It is in Oxford now, 825 Sisk Avenue, Suite 105. I've heard that this is a curated collection of just straight heat. I mean, you've got Columbia, you've got uh, Cutter and Buck, you've got a couple brands that I have not heard of, but I've looked at the website and my good buddy Nicholas Carr, as he spoke on Hit That Line, said that it's some sharp stuff. Yeah, they've got uh, Columbia, Cutter and Buck, Horn Legend, which is one that I've not heard of, but they look sharp. Um, so go over there, go see Scott and the folks, get you some some new swag for Saturday, get it for uh, when you go down to New Orleans. If you're going to Yulman Stadium, rep Ole Miss on the road. They've got it all. Go see them. Um, they've got Ole Miss National Champion merch. They've got your run-of-the-mill, just sharp game day polo. That is College Corner on Sisk Avenue. Go see them and uh, tell them Ben and Zach sent you, and um, they'll appreciate that. So, week tell one. Them and, tell them Ben and Zach from the Talk of Champions Network <laughs> sent you. Yeah. Um, We've established. Now we all understand each other. Now we're all on the same page. Now let's get into week one. Um, Let's do it. Ole Miss opens with Mercer. Nice warm up for Tulane. Um, All due respect to the Bears. They beat North Alabama last week, 17 to 7. Um, 17 points against UNA doesn't bode well going up against an SEC West program that has an influx of talent from the portal, especially on defense. I'm extremely excited. I'm probably more excited to see the defense than I am the offense. I do expect Jackson Dart to trot out there first under center. And uh, Quinchon Judkins, you know, th- this is a game where you kind of hope, Ben, that Judkins gets 100, comes and takes a seat. Jackson Dart, maybe maybe 150, maybe 175, a couple touchdowns, goes and takes a seat. You want those guys to get out. I want to get some game reps, but I'm excited to see the defense. What about you? Yeah, the defense is certainly what what's going to be the, the number one thing you pay attention to, but also the usage of the quarterbacks, how Lane kind of divvies up playing time and reps. We all expect that Jackson Dart's going to be the starter and be the starter unless he just falls apart and um, is removed for Spencer Sanders. I don't think Walker Howard's really a threat um, to be the starter right now. Now, if the season were to spiral – you know, maybe, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think this is a very talented no. football team, a good football team. Um, got some question marks, especially with the recent injury, which we'll get to in the lead. But, like, yes. for now, um, this week, it's going to be very vanilla. Jackson Dart and Spencer Sanders, how often they play, who goes out there first. We think it's Jackson Dart, but he won't say it. <laughs> Lane won't say it. He won't just come out and say, yeah, Jackson's a starter. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't. Um, no, everybody knows. But I do agree with. I do get, I don't shouldn't say agree. I do get why Jackson Dart sounded frustrated earlier this week, though. The third year in a row for you where you've been in a quarterback kind of competition. Um, where are you at mentally with this one and how are you taking this one in? Yeah, I think uh, year three for me, um, you know, my mindset is trying to be the best quarterback in the country. So um, just want to push myself every single day. I got great competition around me that's helped me do that. Uh, have you been informed one way or the other of, of what your role is going to look like Saturday? Uh, I have not. I guess just for you overall with the offense, how is it kind of per- uh, preparing knowing you don't really know what the role is come 1 o'clock Saturday? Um, kind of like I said before, um, you know, I just prepare the same way since I've been here. Um, nothing's ever going to change about that, so that's my mindset. I think the common word we've heard from you and from Kiffin and even teammates is you've kind of matured on the field and the playbook and the comfort level is there. I mean, how do you feel about your level with the playbook and just another year in the system? Yeah, I feel great about it. i um, really looking forward to this year and um, showing that on the field. 
How would you kind of evaluate your growth from the spring period till now? Uh, I think the biggest thing, like you said, is just my comfort. Um, you know, being able to play with like no hesitation and um, just kind of play loose and understand my read, my reads and um, my drops to time everything up to each concept. So, you know, I'm just comfortable and just playing ball at the end of the day. Is it frustrating or kind of put a chip on your shoulder that you haven't been named the week one starter yet? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Jackson Dart has gone through this two straight off seasons and um, all he's done this time around, it, it, it was more of a competition last year just because Luke Altmeyer wasn't necessarily, it's not something Luke was doing. Jackson just was not good. He wasn't good in practice this time around. He has been very good in practice. He has not relinquished quarterback one since Spencer and Walker got here in the spring. He was QB one and didn't turn the ball over at all in the spring. Now he's turned the ball over some in preseason practices here in August. But that's to be expected. He's not going to be perfect, and he's still done nothing, or Spencer Sanders even hasn't done anything particularly noteworthy to overtake him. It's still the same thing. He's one. Spencer Sanders is two. So I get why Jackson Dart sounded frustrated earlier this week. I don't get why Lane Kiffin refuses to say that Jackson Dart well, is the starter. I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. It's Marshall. You know who else? You know who else hasn't announced a starter? Nick Saban. That's Nick Nick Saban in Alabama. Yeah. He's just following that. Okay. That, that's perfectly... I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think he's. I don't think he's waiting on Saban to name a starter. I just think. I mean, we all know he he embodies that that aura, that style that's of coaching, fair. and keeping things close to the vest. That's just maybe my it opinion. doesn't. It doesn't matter. Like, what what does he owe anyone? He owes no one anything. He doesn't have to tell Ben Garrett who his starting quarterback is going to be. Um, no. It's not about us, though. It's more about, you know, if you want your quarterback, who's going to be the star of Jackson Dart, to perform at his peak. I mean, it's Mercer, so it doesn't matter. I, I don't get why you would drag it out like this, because he has earned it, I think. And while it's purely a ceremonial whenever he does announce Jackson Dart is starting against Mercer and probably going to start unless he just shits the bed and Spencer Sanders takes over, he's going to be the starting quarterback for the Ole Miss Rebels in 2023. Um, I think he's earned it, and I think even though it's ceremonial, he deserves that. Maybe a little bit of gamesmanship, whether or not people actually believe it, but make Tulane pair, uh, prepare for everybody. Make Alabama still think that there's okay. a shot that you're going to see Spencer Sanders. I, maybe that's it, where he's like, I just want everybody to prepare for two quarterbacks. Um, It'd be interesting if on Saturday against Mercer, we really didn't see much of Spencer Sanders at all, just because they're disguising uh, or hiding. They're disguising or hiding how they're going to utilize him. Because we've be. talked about this before. You know, since the spring when he got here, his running ability and protecting Jackson Dart, who took way too many hits, a lot of them his own fault. He just refused to get down. He welcomes contact, and that's both a good thing and bad thing. You don't want to coach that out of him. You want that kind mm -hmm. of effort. But also, like, dude, you got to protect yourself. Maybe they've already incorporated a lot of those running elements with Spencer Sanders. Like you talked about on Monday when we did the podcast together, which was then Talk of Champions, the podcast. It's like High School Musical, the musical, the series. But no, it's it's just talk of champions, and this is the flagship. So on the previous flagship of me and Zach, Zach mentioned the Tim Tebow role uh, when he was behind Chris Leak, which makes a lot of sense. It really does. But why would you show that against Mercer? So maybe that is part of it too. Like I'm not going to tell y'all because I do have a very tough schedule. Ole Miss does have a very uh, tough road ahead for them to get to that nine and three benchmark that we think they can get to as far as wins and losses, but. I, I don't know why I would give that away well in advance of two of the biggest games to start, you know, Tulane and Alabama. That's a good point, and I, I didn't really consider that. So, yeah, this weekend, we know what's happening this weekend. What happens next weekend will then begin to define what Ole Miss is in 2023. If you pin me down and made me predict what I think happens on Saturday, I think you're going to see probably Dart for a couple series and then probably Sanders for a couple. Um, now maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I'm off base here. Maybe they let Dart lead three scoring drives and then they take his helmet away and then you let Sanders go out there. We'll see. Um, but I, I've said it all off season darts, the guy he has, I mean, every source that I've spoken with that you've spoken with that Chuck has talked to, he's looked a com like a completely different person in camp. He's taken on a leadership role. He's been way more comfortable in the offense. I mean, Charlie Weiss Jr. said it. Kiffin has said it. I haven't seen Kiffin in the four years he's been at Ole Miss be this openly 
confident about a team. The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. I saw this on the board, and I loved this. Is Zachary Franklin the next Jalen Robinson? Come on. That's great. He hasn't practiced. And, yes, he came here with an injury, but, I mean. got the He got the knee cleaned up, and the they're being stuff. cautious with him because they okay. want him to be a dude. He has Jackson been out Dart, practice. I've seen Jackson him. Jackson Dart had the same scope done earlier this year. Okay. All right. We'll see. Yeah, he hasn't put pads on yet. But Kiffin sounded optimistic when talking about it. When could Sakari Franklin realistically bring the impact that we thought Ole Miss was signing him to provide? Because he comes over from UTSA, you're not signing him to be depth. I mean, everybody wanted Zakari Franklin. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, he he's a guy that I think brings a very unique element to the offense with how effective he can be over the middle. I mean, he was like a slant machine with UTSA. Um, I think he runs superb routes. He's experienced, I mean, back-to-back thousand yard seasons. Um, and say what you want about UTSA. They've been one of the best G five programs in the last couple of years. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it, they're going to, they're going to take it slow because the room is there's, there's tons of talent there. So they don't need him for Mercer. They don't need him for Tulane. I think they're going to try to get him back for Alabama. Um, yeah, but is and that just, where he makes a realistic impact? I don't uh, I think mean, so. We'll see. Probably not. But, yeah, I mean, you need him for that that home stretch in late October, November to make plays for you. Um, the bigger question for me is Caden Priestcorn. Um, mm-hmm. Rumors were flying yesterday that he was going to be out two to three weeks due to surgery. Um, it would appear now that it is now just a simple minor procedure um, that is not actually under the knife. They're trying to make a decision on whether or not they want to do the procedure. If it happens, it'll be two weeks. Um, now, he doesn't need to play against Mercer. You'd like no. to have the game reps, but they don't need. No. If Ole Miss needs him to beat Mercer, right. that's a humongous problem. And They're, they're perfectly fine year. not having Priest Corn or Trigg because Trigg has the obvious disciplinary stuff. He wasn't at practice earlier this week, and – um, there was a debate, or not even a debate, there was a discussion going on, a very real discussion in the middle of the week about whether or not he was going to be on this team by the end of this week. Well, he's still on the team, uh, back out at practice, might be in the doghouse again, but what else is new with Michael Trigg? They don't really need Michael Trigg or Caden Priestcorn against Mercer, and quite frankly, I would much rather see the reps of Hudson Wolf and Kyron Heath and Javante Connor. I mean, I want to see those guys, specifically Hudson Wolf. I really want to see, because remember coming out of high school, that's a four-star prospect, top 200 player. Um, mm-hmm. the Nick Saban concerns. wanted him. Nick Saban wanted him. Josh Heifel wanted him. Committed to Tennessee for a while. Almost flipped him from Tennessee. He's a legitimate next-level build. I don't know about mm-hmm. talent, but next-level build, he's got it. He's built just like what you think a tight end in the NFL is supposed to look like. Um, but he's been injured for there's, years and years. Yeah. So there's, been, he, there's been NFL scouts at camp for a reason. Yeah, I mean, but the back issue was bad. I mean, he was dealing with a really bad back injury, so I don't know why I pointed to my back like I didn't know what the back was. But, uh, yeah, like I, I think I want to see that back there. I want to see Hudson Wolf. I want to see him. I want to see him blocking. Yeah, they, I see, not just catching passes. I want to see him actually yeah. mixing it up and playing real football because um, he could be a piece, man. I mean, a next-level piece. And then it contextualizes one way or the other what happens with Caden Priestcorn if he's – if he has to go into the knife and he's down for multiple weeks, well, yeah, Trigg's back, though, and you can compensate because, hey, we might have something here in Hudson Wolf. You just haven't seen those kind of live reps with him, and mm. that's kind of what you've been waiting for. Well, that's a perfect opportunity as Mercer to get those reps because, like you said, you're not going to need Caden Priestcorn for this one. But it's, right. it's conflicting <laughs> reporting, but I think it's pretty much saying the same thing. Chase Palmer, Rebel Grove, put it out first. Could be multiple weeks for Caden Priestcorn. Chuck comes back and says, well, I heard he could play on Saturday. It's all one and the same thing. They're trying to avoid surgery, and if they can, because if he has to go under the knife, it's going to be multiple weeks. The likelihood, yeah. I think, the likely result is they say, 
look, guys, we're just going to have to bite the bullet and let him go under the knife. But that's speculative. What we know now is there's an issue with Caden Priest coin that could hold him out multiple weeks. A decision has not been made one way or the other. The next question will for Lane after, after Mercer, because Caden won't play for Mercer. I don't think that's, again, opinion. But I think the only yeah. question then for Lane is, um, did he get the surgery? Well, and you've seen some good things from Kyron Heath. Javante Connor really popped on Saturday scrimmage. Um, I talked with somebody that was in attendance. They said he was physical, um, really got after it after the catch. Um, so, yeah, get those guys out there, get them some game reps, get their feet wet, and know that, okay, I can probably count on this guy to make a catch on third and five down the stretch. Now, it is Mercer, but you got to get game reps. You got to get them out there. I mean, this is 2023. You're not redshirting people anymore, barring, you know, a crazy injury. So get them out there, let them play. And yeah, Hudson Wolf, we want to see it. I mean, the guy had offers from everybody coming out of high school and he's been on the shelf since. The black jersey's been taken off. He's been out there with the ones and the twos. Let's let's see if he can let's see if he can get out there and do something. Now, Michael Trigg, we obviously know that he's probably going to play a role now because of priest corn being on the shelf how big of a role though is he going to be able to put it together you know that the the knucklehead syndrome is strong here but he's got a ton of talent there's no denying that and they he's on the team still for a reason so um yeah and then as we move on here defensively i'm extremely excited to see what this defense is going to be multiple um but i'm excited to watch the defensive line i think joshua harris and Stephen Wynn are going to really change the game because I think it allows J.J. Pegues, Cedric Johnson, Jared Ivey, Isaac Uklu, it allows those guys to win one-on-one -on -one battles because last year, Pegues was having to demand and win those double teams to even make plays. I mean, he was, he was a true nose guard for most of the year. Now he's going to be able to use that athleticism, use that quickness, get out on the edge a little bit, and uh, get out in space and make plays. And I think Jared Ivey, I expect Jared Ivey to have a big year. I'm expecting like a like a Tavius Robinson type year for him. Another year with with Randall Joyner. Um, I mean, look, the CV is is getting pretty loud for Joyner. He's got Sam Williams now in the league. He's got Tavius Robinson in the league. Um, you have to pay him. You're gonna have to that, pay yeah. Randall Joyner. I mean, you are. Gonna, the price of the brick continues to go up. <laughs> so. Uh, the big guy out of the portal, Ukwu, he was a difference maker for James Madison. What's he going to look like at the next level? How big of a how big of a difference can he make on this defense? And then Cedric Johnson, finally healthy. Um, they've got a, a hell of a three headed monster, um, you know, a Cerberus, if you will, a defensive end. And then you bring in who Joyner says is the best athlete on the team in JJ Pegues. Um, I think this this defensive line is kind of sneaky good right now. And then. At the second level, Ben, tons of experience. Jeremiah Jean-Baptiste and Monty Montgomery have played a lot of football. Ashante Sistrunk has played a lot of football. Um, then you throw in a guy like TJ Dudley, who is super talented. Dabo Sweeney and that Clemson program, they are very, 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 very particular on who they sign. They don't just take anybody. They don't just take a guy because, oh, you know, he might be good in a couple of years. No, Clemson signs people to play right away. And they have a good defense. And I think that that is a really good sign for TJ Dudley to come in because you hope now you have him alongside Sontarian Perkins and the rest of the, the linebacking group, Tyler Banks. Um, you've got some dudes there now. And then, look, we, we belabored the point a lot this offseason. The secondary is just loaded. I mean, DeAndre Prince is back as a returning starter, but then you've got all-conference dudes everywhere. Deshaun Anthony, John Saunders, Deshaun Gaddy, Samari Walton. I mean, tons and tons and tons of experience. Oh, and then you've got Aishim Young back. Darius Tennyson's back. He's going to play everywhere. They moved him at linebacker a little bit. Um, He's been and then Trey Washington. Up, like, Ladarius, I'm, that's one thing for Mercer I want to see, too. Uh, mm -hmm. The walking wounded. There's been a lot of them. Jordan Watkins was out for a lot of preseason camp. He's back and been practicing this week. But seeing the usage of guys like him, like Ladarius Tennyson, all of those guys who've not had a ton of practice reps outside of like the first week of August camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and look, a guy that I'm really looking forward to watching this year in the secondary Trey Washington played a lot late in the year, 
made some plays, big play in the bowl game. Um, they really like him. DeMarco Williams as well. He was banged up last year. Um, those guys have got to step up. Like, it's time. Like, as a true sophomore, Pete Golding, you're on the team for a reason. They they trimmed a little fat. They 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 got rid of, you know, some guys on the roster that I don't think Pete Golding thought could play, and that's, you know, no disrespect. That's just the way also, it is. Also, uh, lost a couple, like Davison Igbenosin and Tyshim Johnson. Yeah. I think they Two. would take back. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. I, yeah, that, that's big. I go go look around. Be, go look around the internet if, for folks that are interested. Go look around the internet on how those two guys are doing. Yeah, I so the defense is what I'm looking for. Like I'll, I'll have my notepad out and I'll be taking notes on the defense. I want to see what Pete Golding because I, I imagine they're going to run a lot of base, but I just want to see which guys make plays because you know they've been chomping at the bit to hit somebody other than their teammates. And this is, I mean, this it's college football. It's back. So people are fired up. I'm excited to see who makes plays and um, who runs out there with the first team because a ton of talent on that defensive side of the ball. Regardless of what people think, regardless of what people say about last year, I'm on record saying I thought the defense was great last year down the stretch. They gave Ole Miss opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to win games. They kept them in the A&M game, held off, uh, got a big road win there. They did enough in the Egg Bowl to get that win. The offense just couldn't put it in the end zone. Um so I'm excited because Pete Golding, we've talked about it enough. The cachet behind that name, stamp of approval from Nick Saban. I'm excited. He's never had less than a top 30 defense. Give me a final score prediction. Uh, let's see. I will give it to you. I sent it to our boy Jake. I'm going to say 52-13 Ole Miss. I think I said 54-3 to already, so I'm just going to go with that. 54-3. to All right. Okay. That's going to do it for the flagship. We're back. Um, again, I don't want to say better than ever because you and Godfrey had a great thing going, but we're, 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 we're bigger. Bless up. Bless up. We got Godfrey. some video. We got some video now. Um, shout out to our good friends at college corner for bringing this to you. Um, and, uh, the rest of the sponsors that make everything possible for us on the talk of champions network. We appreciate y'all. And of course you, the viewer and the listener for tuning in for Ben. I'm Zach. This has been the flagship. Enjoy week one. Y'all be good.